When and where did Hephaestion die? It happened that Ecbatana, in about November of 324 BC, uh, Alexander was up in the mountains in the north of Persia, he was holding uh, theatrical contests and games. Uh, you can see the location on this map of Alexander's empire, marked by the red circle, fairly central location in the empire. How did it come about? Well, um, he simply fell ill, Plutarch says, with a fever. It raged for seven days, according to Arian, and he may have actually been starting to recover when his doctor decided to go off to the boys' gymnastic contests. And Hephaestion took the opportunity to order a flagon of wine and a boiled chicken, and shortly after downing these, he collapsed and died before even Alexander could get back to his bedside. Does this make medical sense, or might the food have been poisoned? There's a serious risk in eating solid food soon after a serious bowel infection. Um, the intestine might have been ulcerate, ulcerated by something like typhoid, for example, and this could still be in a delicate state even if the fever has gone down. So if you eat solid food, there's a chance that your gut might be ruptured and that could easily prove fatal quite rapidly. In other words, there's no need in these circumstances to invoke poisoning as an explanation. There's a perfectly straightforward, natural con uh, way it could have happened. Alexander took it quite hard, I suppose. He was devastated. Uh, the first thing he did was have the doctor hanged or crucified. Uh, he was at least guilty of dereliction of duty if he'd stayed around uh, instead of going off, then it's fairly certain he would have stopped his patient eating solid food so early in his recovery. I heard from one source that Alexander was driven to acts of madness. Uh, that would be Ephesus of Olynthus. Uh, some of his uh, words are recorded by a surviving writer called Athenaeus. Uh, he says that Alexander indulged in acts that shocked his contemporaries, such as having the manes and tails of all the horses shorn, uh, dismantling the battlements of some of the towns such as Ecbatana, uh, and he banned music in the camp for a long period. Uh, but in fact I've shown that all of these actions uh, have precedence in the great literature with which Alexander was familiar, such as Homer's Iliad, when Achilles is mourning for Patroclus, or uh, there's a play by Euripides called Alcestis where uh, the king Admetus is mourning uh, his queen Alcestis uh, and so Alexander was probably simply following these precedents in his behaviour. Is it true that the funeral was the most spectacular in history? Well, to judge by its cost anyway, that's recorded to have been between 10 and 12,000 talents of silver, that translates to about 25 tonnes of gold, which is equivalent to about a billion dollars in uh, today's money. Uh, its centrepiece was a truly magnificent funeral pyre. Do we know what the pyre looked like? Uh, yeah, we have a description that survived, which was probably originally written by Clitarchus, uh, and has also been recorded by a surviving writer called Diodorus and uh, I've been able to hypothesize a reconstruction based on his words. He particularly says that the pyre was made of uh, 30 rectangular chambers which were individually supported by the trunks of palm trees. Now 30 happens to equal 4 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 and so I think I can hypothesize that the bottom uh, here was four by four chambers, the next one three by three, then two by two, and then one at the top. The total size is also recorded. It was about 180 meters wide at the base and stood about 60 meters tall. Um, it had seven bands of decoration that Diodorus describes as well. Uh, you can see two bands per tier in the lower levels. Uh, and some of the iconography of these bands is quite interesting. For example, this bottom band, there were 
60 prows of galleys on each side and that corresponds to the 60 ships with which Alexander is said to have crossed the Hellespont to Troy at the start of his expedition and in the next row up there's a series of torches and Hephaestion is named after the god of fire, the Greek god of fire, Hephaestos so they're probably symbolic of the deceased. Are there any traces of such a huge pyre? Uh, Robert Calderway excavated Babylon in the early 20th century and he found an area and it's shown on this map here roughly where the letter J is an area where there was a brick platform with the charred imprints of palm trunks upon it and it's a reasonable inference that that was the site of the pyre. Uh, there was a plan to implement the same construction in stone but Alexander died a month after Hephaestion's funeral so it was never actually built. Where can I find out more about Hephaestion? Um, there's a long section of my book on Alexander's lovers which is devoted to Hephaestion or you can go to my website at www.alexanderslovers.com Thank you.